Am I the a-hole for not giving my mom part of my inheritance? So long story. My grandma passed away in November, she left me like 50% of everything she had. My mom only got like 3%. With this, I inherited a house, and I'm the only one on the life insurance policy, stuff like that. Well, my mom is calling me selfish. I turn 18 in less than a week, and I told her I will not let her and my siblings move into the house with me, and let her have the master bedroom etc. She got upset saying I don't need an entire house to myself, that I'm selfish, etc. But she didn't raise me, my grandma did. She's never been there for me and she's always treated me horribly. She's been in and out of jail my entire life for substance use, and she abused me the three months I lived with her, and I don't want that toxicity in my life lol. So I am standing my ground and saying no, but I have other family members trying to convince me to let her move in, and I'm just huh? Why should I? I don't know. I feel like maybe I'm being rude, but I also just don't care. She's never done anything for me so why should I do things for her? So, am I the a-hole or what? Edit, I also wanted to state, she knows I'm engaged to someone, yet she still says I don't need a space of my own, and that if I let her have the house, me and my boyfriend can move in with her. I genuinely can't seem to understand her thought process. Thanks to everyone for the advice and for reassuring me that I'm not a major jerk haha. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You don't owe her anything. Turn 18, enjoy your house. Use the inheritance to better yourself and set yourself up for a good life. Cut toxic people out. Not the a-hole OP. Your grandmother left you that inheritance for a reason, and left your mom what she did for a reason too. Your mom has no claim to your inheritance. Enjoy your house. Sure, let her move in and become queen. What could go wrong? Trust your instincts here. There's a reason your grandmother only left her 3%. Have a wonderful life. You are not responsible for housing her and your siblings. Not the a-hole. Anyone saying you should allow her to live with you, perhaps they can let her move in? Her mother would definitely not turn the grandmother's home into a den with a parade of worthless boyfriends in and out of the house, who would probably leave her with another couple of kids that OP would be expected to provide for just because she's got money. The mother also would never dream of wasting the inheritance on more substances and partying, and things she doesn't need. Leaving her even poorer and more of a train wreck than she is now. Impossible. Would totally never happen. If your other family members want to house your mother, they can do so. They have no right to make you do this however. Move, save your money, find some cool roommates, with formal leases. No informality, that will bite you in the butt, or no roommates, it's your space. Start taking college classes you are interested in. Don't invest any of your money in friends or family. All your investments should be formalized through an investment firm like Fidelity or Vanguard. Index funds are good. Any money you give to friends or family you have to consider gone. You are never getting it back and more than likely they will ask for more. Don't talk about the money you inherited to anyone. Don't tell anyone you own the house either. For a while, keep this all to yourself and learn to deal with it personally. You have no idea how entitled people will feel to your money once they know it's there. Your mother will not be the last in this regard. One option now is to go no contact with your mother now, and threaten no contact with any family member who talks about her or tries to guilt you into spending your money or moving family into your house. Set down rules now that they may not break. Not the a-hole and I hope you enjoy what your grandmother intended for you to have, and only you. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to provide more than my obligation threshold to my parents? My, 36 mil. Father brought us to the US from an Asian country when I was 12, and I have four younger siblings. In our culture, the children are the parents' retirement accounts, so parents tend to invest in the children and then reap the rewards when they become successful adults and help the parents retire. My father and a couple of his friends came to the US around the same time in the late 80s. His friends have sons around mine and my brother's age. They all got the same jobs, but my father consistently earned more money than the other two. His two friends invested in their children's educations and provided a comfortable lifestyle for their wives and kids back in the old country. My father was more interested in buying land and trying new business ventures, so we lived relatively simple lives. That trend continued when we came to the US. We lived in relative poverty in the US while my father sent more and more money back home to buy properties. He said he was building his retirement and was going to move back to the old country and retire there when he was old. At the same time, 
his friends were working less and spending more time with their kids and investing heavily in their children's future, instead of building properties in the home country. We were in constant contact growing up and those kids had much better lives than us, going to private schools and getting allowances. My siblings and I would be lucky to get $50 for new notebooks and pencils at the beginning of the school year, let alone an allowance or access to private schools. My parents never went to parent-teacher conferences or ever checked our report cards. Despite all of that, my brother and I are now decently successful in our careers. The sons of his friends are just as successful. Since their fathers sacrificed so much for those guys' futures, they're financing relatively comfortable and lavish retirements for their fathers. My brother and I refuse to do the same, which means that my father can no longer keep up with his friends in terms of quality of life. My father's schemes and businesses and properties in the old country haven't amounted to anything much in terms of income, so my parents are now reliant on my brother and I for support. We only provide enough for them to cover bills and food. We refuse to buy them houses and cars in the old country and here, and finance multiple trips back and forth. My brother and I can afford it, but we refuse to provide more than our obligation. Our parents never did anything more than their obligation to house and feed the kids, so we're choosing to limit our support to just that. My father has taken to telling family that his sons have effectively abandoned him despite our ongoing support, so we've started to be honest when asked and say that he never provided anything more than the bare minimum, so we're choosing to do the same. His investments are in the old country. He can go back and get it from there. Are we the a-holes? Not the a-hole, you still support them. And despite your childhood you're successful. You and your brother worked hard for it, it's your money and your decision. Would decline any pleas for support explaining you need the money for your retirement. If he has a lot of land, then why doesn't he just sell it or move back? Would that be a decent sum of money? There's a long backstory and he refuses to sell anything. My grandfather was murdered when my father was 15 or so. In the ensuing war for revenge. A lot of the hereditary land that was supposed to go to my father was mortgaged or sold to pay for bullets and stuff. My father and his brothers bought back every inch once they started working. But they were done recovering the family land before I was even born. My father just never stopped investing in the homeland and kept pushing to buy more and invest more over there. Everything combined can be sold for $2 million plus, but he refuses to sell it. He starts talking about how he had to work in the coal mines to buy back the ancestral land. Which is true. But there's plenty of other things that is outside the ancestral land that can be sold, but he won't sell. Not the a-hole, what you sow, so shall you reap. Seems like an extremely applicable adage here. Give the minimum, get the minimum back. As for having abandoned him, seems like those support checks are unnecessary if you've abandoned him. The money's mostly so our mother doesn't have to suffer financial distress alongside him. Not sure how much money is your obligation but tell him that can end quickly if he continues to complain. My brother and I pitch in $1,000 per month. He gets social security and some money from renting out his basement. Adds up to about $3,500 a month. My parents could live reasonably well off that. But he's still sending some money back to try and save his failing businesses in the old country. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not returning a family heirloom? My, 32 mil. Late wife, 35 female, has a large family and her family are very close. She was the oldest from 4 siblings, 33 female, 29 male, and 27 female, and we were child free until our son. Her family have a treasured heirloom, it's an old silver ring with small detailed patterns all over it, it is very pretty. It traditionally is given to the firstborn child, my wife, who passes at their firstborn. A few years ago, our son, 4 male, was born. And while it was a very happy time, it was also sad. My wife had a health condition that affected her heart and carrying and giving birth to our son had made it worse, she was hospitalized for a while, but even when she came back, she was still weak. She had to quit her job and she looked after our son while I worked. She was unwell but she was very happy, she loved our son. She recently passed, and it was very hard on us. Before she passed, she gave the ring to our son, he wears it on a chain around his neck. He loves it and doesn't take it off since mommy went away. Yesterday, my mother-in-law called to check up on us, while talking, she asked about the ring and asked when would be a good time to pick it up. I was confused. She explained that while the tradition was firstborn, for the past five generations the firstborns, had been girls and she thinks that the ring should go to my niece. I told her no. The ring belonged to my son. 
He was my wife's firstborn and my wife had given it to him. It was important to him. She did not like this, many people have called me to ask about what is going on, and some are angry at me, some are angry at mother-in-law. It's their family heirloom, not mine so many I should give it back? Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole you are following the last owner of the ring's wishes and following their tradition. I am so sorry for your loss. Not the a-hole. This, nothing else needs to be said. OP, I sorry for the loss of your wife. May she rest in peace. I'm sorry for your loss too OP, but in your shoes, I would never let my son wear his ring pendant necklace around his mother's family. Your son lost his mother, and your mother-in-law want to rip from his hands a treasured gift from her? No, scratch that. She wants you to rip it from his hands for her. I understand that mother-in-law is grieving, and I have seen in my own family what the death of child can do to a parent, but your son is grieving his own cruel and unimaginable loss. Only a ghoul would take that ring back from him. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. You married into your wife's family. Whether they like it or not, you are now their son, and your own child continues the family line. The ring stays with your son, and may it ever remind you both of his mother. Peace be upon you. Not the a-hole. Your wife followed tradition and chose to give it to her son, her death is irrelevant in that. It is however highly inappropriate and quite frankly very sad that your mother-in-law is using your wife's death as reason to pull the heirloom from your son, and gift it instead to her niece. The tradition states firstborn child, not firstborn daughter. The gift from your wife to her son should be cherished as it's his gift from his late mother. Your mother-in-law should be ashamed of herself. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for potentially damaging my brother's relationship with his son's over college tuition? My, 42 male, brother, 40 male, are very different people, I'm a perpetually single gay actuary working for a large company, and my brother is your stereotypical blue collar guy who worked his way up from a construction worker to a heavy equipment operator. Due to differences in our career paths and overall lights and our income sometimes bothers my brother since he has always had to struggle. He does make a nice living and his wife is a nurse, but we live in a high cost of living area so a lot of their income goes to paying for housing and expenses, while I paid off my house and invest slash save a significant portion of my income from my job. He has never once said anything to me directly, but he will make little comments like if I get a new car, I should be glad I can afford it because I don't have kids, etc. I don't mean to give the impression that my brother is a bad guy or anything, because for the most part, he is a total sweetheart and took my coming out in the 90s no less, much better than anyone else in the family, and always stays involved in my life. I only give that information to provide a background of why this situation may have come to a head. My nephews are 14 and 16 and are getting to the age where they need to start planning college, and my brother has told them that he really can't give them much help with college except for the savings plan, 529, that he has for both of them which have roughly $10,000 each. While the boys were over at my house last weekend hanging out, they were complaining to me about how they were going to afford college and I was asking them where they want to go to school. Since they both are planning to go to school in state, I was thinking that the tuition for both of them wouldn't really be that bad, and I told them not to worry about it, I'd pay for it. Well, naturally they were ecstatic about it, but when they told my brother, he got upset with me and said I shouldn't flash my money around and make his kids feel like they can't rely on him, and instead need to run to their uncle for money. I apologized for offering that without telling him. But I told him I was not going to take the offer back because I love my nephews and want them to start their life out debt free. So either he lets me pay for it directly, or I'll wait until they graduate and pay off their debt then, regardless they will be starting their adult life debt free. We got into a huge argument about it and I feel like I may have really overstepped some boundaries here, but I am not backing down on my offer and kneecapping my nephews financially for my brother's pride. Am I the a-hole? No a-holes here. Your heart was definitely in the right place, and I commend you for being there for your nephews. It's clear your generosity struck a nerve for your brother and that may have set him off. Give it a few days and then try speaking to your brother. Disagree. The brother is an a-hole for objecting to OP offering to pay for his son's college. What did he want, for OP to say, oh sorry, I won't pay for it now. And then for his sons to go into massive debt? Not the a-hole. No a-holes here. I think your intent is wonderful, but your execution could have been a little better. You could have gone to your brother and said, Hey, I love my nephews and want to contribute to contribute to their education fund, 
so it wasn't a direct eye in the kid's head to dad not having money and then boom, rich uncle swoops in and saves the day. That said, your brother shouldn't let his pride get the best of him. It's a generous and kind offer and he should know you well enough to know that you weren't trying to show off or show him up. Yeah, I clearly let my mouth get ahead of my brain. At this point though, it's not like I can take back the offer, I feel I'd be a bigger a-hole rescinding the offer. This is just simply a no-win situation now. No a-holes here. I agree you should have chatted with your brother first and I can see the hit to his pride. But I was the kid in this situation being poor with a rich auntie, except my parents were so proud they put a stop to it, and my auntie didn't want to upset my parents. You know what that achieved? My parents still felt like charity cases, my auntie felt bad because she didn't get to help and I missed out on a laundry list of amazing things because of it. Vacations, money for a car, money for college, various things that would have made my life easier, computers, bikes etc. I am still upset with my parents for this. 20 years later. Their pride was worth more than a better life for their child. That is messed up. I didn't care that they didn't have the money for things, I understood. What I could not understand is why they would prevent me from having these opportunities. Definitely discuss and see if you can figure out a way to do it with your brother's blessing, maybe frame it in a way saying you don't have any kids to take care of so it's actually an important thing for you to do for yourself. But if compromise doesn't come, freaking do it anyway. Help those kids. Why not? What is money good for if not that? Good luck, you sound like a great uncle and brother. This comment really strikes a chord with me. I've felt like that their whole lives, I've wanted to do a ton of stuff for them. But I've always had to tiptoe around my brother's feelings about my money. I wanted to take my nephews on a trip to Disney when my older nephew was turning 10, but they told me it was too extravagant of a gift. I wanted to give my younger nephew a PS5 when they came out, but once again I was told no, my 16-year-old nephew doesn't have his own car and I have a 8-year-old Prius sitting in my driveway that I offered to let him drive. Keep in mind, just drive, not have permanently. Parents said no. They have all the power in this situation because at the snap of their fingers they can tell me I can't see my nephews anymore, and unfortunately, they'd rather their sons not be spoiled by me than give them access to things they wouldn't otherwise have. It's such a bummer of a situation, but I guess once the boys turn 18 their parents won't have much of a say anymore and I will just pay their debt off regardless of how my brother feels about it. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next